Okay. Hi everybody. Um, so today we want to finish the introduction to linear regression and especially with the correlation coefficient which we introduced and where we said that yeah this co correlation coefficient has a nice interpretation so that it is just the that we can interpret it as, yeah, so to speak, what we can explain with our regression model relative to the total dispersion with respect to the mean. So if we obtain, for example, a coefficient of determination of 0.7, then we can interpret this as that with our linear model, we can explain 70% of the dependence between the two variables. Well, and then we want to do this just for our example. And this I want to do again with you in Excel. So first of all, what we need is our linear model. And for this, I told you that we have also the formulas. So again, in order to obtain the part of the vertical axis, and then we need also the slope of our linear line, this was A and B, which we have already done last week. So, and then we can calculate this, are our data points, and now we are calculating with our linear line the corresponding estimated data points which are then lying on our fitted line. So y hat we obtain then a plus slope times the corresponding value of x. So times 9 would be then the value which corresponds to a value of x equals 9. The data point was 24. And we obtain, hello, now our data point lying on the linear line with 21.72. OK, and since I want to copy the formula, I have again to fix a and b. So dollar signs in front of the parameters. Okay, what else do I need? I need also the mean of our values for y. So y bar, and this was done with can do also with the formula in Excel. This was then 27. And now we are calculating the squared distance of our hypothetical data point, which is lying on the line with respect to the mean of our data points for y. So this equals then 
y hat minus power 27. Again, fixing the 27 and spared. Oh, there's something missing. What is missing? Or it has to be B27. Hopefully this is now OK. I click in here. So not B27, B14. So now it should work. Yes. So these two values are now highlighted. And then we see that our formula is OK. So, so these are all like square distances between y bar and the data points, hypothetical data points lying on our line. And also, we calculate the square distances of the true data points. And for this, we do not have to take E, but D. Let's click in the formula. So 24 minus 27 squared should be 9. OK. Then we need the sums of the square distances. So equals sum. Yep. Cayman version. And here also the sum. And then we need, we, uh, we obtain for our coefficient of determination explained variance over total variance 0.84 and of course for this we have also a formula y and x Four and the last version, how we can do it in order to be complete. Let's show this data within our diagram. Clicking into the data points. Showing the formula and the coefficient of determination. And you see 1.97, 3.9, and our coefficient of determination 0 0.4, 0 0.84, as we have calculated the numbers also down here. OK, so this our little example. And how to interpret this? So the proportion is then more or less the explanation part of our linear model. Well, if we have 
a coefficient of determination in the neighborhood of zero, then our data points are more or less a symmetrical cloud of data points and there is almost no um, dependence between these two variables. And if we have an R squared in the neighborhood of one, then more or less our data points are lying on our linear line. Well, and now let's see what we obtain for our US data. This was the plot from 1949 until today, quarterly data, click within the data points. Oops, that click should work, why not? No, line and So, what we then obtain is y equals 0.42 times x. So, this is the slope. And this is the cut at the vertical axis. And we have a coefficient of determination of roughly 0 0.6. So there is some dependence, but the dependence is not too strong. <clears throat> well, we have a very long time horizon. And of course, during this time, we have, of course, many changes in the yeah, framework of the economy in the United States. If you think of the oil crisis in the 70s, if you think of the breakdown of Soviet Union and of course also the financial crisis, um, <clears throat> Corona crisis in the last 15 years. So it is not that surprisingly that we have, if we make a fit over this long, very long time, that we do not obtain a coefficient of determination in the neighborhood of one. But how can we also um, interpret the slope and the cut of the vertical axis? For this, we go back to our model of Okun's law. And for this, we see if we take the um, growth version, take this. So we have on the oops, 
vertical axis, the change in unemployment rate. Is this right? Let's see. This is F. X and G is U, okay. There you have also to be careful that you do not change um, the axis uh, because if you just click on it, then sometimes you don't know which one is which. Okay, so. <clears throat> if we rewrite this model then we obtain du is minus one half plus <coughs> Oh, minus one half gy plus one half times gy star. So what we then can say is we have here a fitted parameter of minus 0.4. And so this parameter is then in these yeah, historical neighborhood what Okun find uh, found in the 1960s. That you need more or less a twice as big economic growth in order to reduce unemployment by one percentage point. So this is in the neighborhood of Okun's finding in the 1960s. <clears throat> Well, and then we can also interpret this number here as potential growth, but you see here that we have to correct this one then with our parameter A. So in this case, we would then obtain from this that we would have Y is roughly one point three divided by zero point four. So let's calculate this. How do we have it here? Oops. So G Y star would be then roughly one point three. Four O 
over 0.4225. So over time in the United States, when a uh, potential output would be roughly 3.12%, or this we can also calculate, I think, if we just change the axis here. Because if we do this, Or if we change this into G, and this to F, and then you see here that you, of course, then directly obtain this number, which you can directly interpret as potential growth. Have you got this? Because within here, this is, oops, This is our number for the vertical axis. And therefore, you have, if you are interested in potential growth, to recorrect this number with the parameter of the slope. Or if you just make the um, fit just the other way around, that you write this as gy equals a times delta u plus gy star. So if you change the um, axis in your fit, then you directly obtain the potential output. OK. Done. I wanted to show you. Yes, here I directly rearranged um, the linear equations so that you can directly interpret the cut of the vertical axis with potential output. Yeah, and I want now to do this for Germany via the um, data of IMF data mapper. And then we will look also at different time periods, not only the whole period of uh, <clears throat> 1980 until today. So this is then that you should look at meaningful sub periods and for your country you maybe can even identify other um, reasonable sub periods than i will do now for germany okay so imf data mapper oh this you don't see And within the slides, you have also the link where you directly come to the IMF.
DMF data map. So the first thing is always that we have here already uh, real GDP growth. see it better and then I just download all data that you then see it or you can here download your specific data so this would be then GDP And we need also um, unemployment. Data sets and World Economic Outlook. Current prices, inflation, population, and here you have the unemployment. Now you see that you are within the data meta with the unemployment rate. This we also download. Unemployment. And now you have to put the numbers together. Data, GDP, you see this almost, so then we look for Germany. Here we have Germany. Take the data and I put it here. Look. So then I put it down here. And since I do not <coughs> want to have it in lines, I change the format response the data so this was real GDP growth and unemployment so you have to be careful because you also get it just a forecast until twenty twenty eight. But you should then use, of course, only the data until twenty twenty two. Here and now the unemployment data. Again, look for Germany. There we have Germany. Take the data, put it into our file. So, and then we do not need um, the unemployment rate itself, but we need the change of unemployment rate. So we calculate the change minus 
this one until 22. So this is 20D, U, You and we need also to change uh, uh, economic growth, and this would be then dy. Let's put this here. So X is, and this we want to change. So I think in order to be a bit faster, then we change just this and this. And because then we are directly in the version. can interpret our numbers. Again, D is DU and E is DY. Let's see this. So X is now unemployment and vertical axis is economic growth. Okay, so put this then also on the axis. So this is then dy and du. And then we have it written down in this version and I think this is a bit a little bit better because then you can directly interpret the vertical axis part as um, potential growth. So and this would be then from 1981 until 20 Let's fit this again. Oh, this you don't see. Down here. So let's take this from here. So this would be then for Germany. So let this also down here. Yeah. And then what would be a reasonable period for Germany? Of course, if we move now until the reunification. Mm -hmm. So let's then fit the data until 1989. Mm -hmm. 
this you can easily do. You just copy your diagram and 1989 is here. This you don't see, sorry, there is line number 13. So if we do this as 1989, then we click in. change the data and then change the 46 into 13. So, and then you are directly done and you have the time period until reunification. So in here, so and then, well, we can say another reasonable possibility would be maybe um, until the dot com crisis in the beginning of the two thousand. So then. We should also uh, yeah, omit uh, the terminal of the reunification. So maybe you start in 1991 or 1992 until the year 2000. And this there you can also try for your country. What happens if I leave out the first data point or something like this and you can have then a look how do these numbers of my fit are changing? Okay, done. The next one. Let's take from 91 until 2000. And this is then from 15 to 24. From 15 to 24. one so what else would be reasonable maybe then we go from the dot-com crisis until the financial crisis so from 2001 until 2008 and this is from 25 to 32 25 to 32 25 to yeah, and then maybe this prosperous time for Germany in between the financial crisis and Corona crisis. And for this, I think it would be reasonable you see this already here, you have this 
huge downturn in 2009. So this would be in your regression then of course a very large outlayer. So I would recommend that you should leave this data point out and also the um, <clears throat> yeah, Corona crisis, but let's take it um, or let's fit it twice. Once we take the period from 2009 to 22 and the other fit we take only this period from 2010 to 2019. I think this would be interesting. So let's start from 2009 to 22. This would be then 33 until 46. until 46, 33 until 46, and the other one omitting these huge downturns in financial crisis and corona crisis, and let's have a look what we have in 2010 to 2019 and this is then 34 until 43 34 34 until 43 Okay, and then this one, and Well, something is wrong here because here we have the same numbers. Did I change here? Again, twenty nine to this is thirty three until forty six. didn't saved it 33 until 46 43 until 46 now it should be better <laughs> This one is now this one. <coughs> so 
<coughs> so the rest I think seems reasonable. one here is okay I don't see it okay so <clears throat> and now we can yeah start to interpret what we have analyzed here so first of all for Germany here we see a very low coefficient of determination. So, uh, of course, we have this linear dependence here, minus um, 1.3 plus 1.6. So this could be interpreted as potential output, but since our coefficient of correlation um, is very low, so in the neighborhood of zero, you have to really to be careful that you um, interpret this long time series as a stable dependence between these two variables. And yeah, this you should then mention and then you can interpret why is this the case? Well, if I go from 1980 until today, uh, then I have reunification. I have dot-com crisis. I have the um, Corona crisis. I have even um, the European debt crisis. So this would be also the period you can look at. So during these last 40 years, these were very turbulent times for Germany. And for this, we are not very surprised that we do not have a really stable dependence between these two variables. But nevertheless, if we take then the time from the beginning of the 80s until reunification here, we have an R squared of almost 0 0.8. Mm -hmm. So, and if we go to this period, then we can also say, well, during this time, the framework for the um, German economy was quite stable. And what we also see, this was a quite prosperous time with a potential growth of almost 2.5 and if we go back to this time, then we also know that during this time, the um, situation for Germany or for Western Germany was quite prosperous. And we see also here a more or less classical dependence for uh, the parameter of Okun's law. So this would be for Okun in the neighborhood of minus two. And well, in Germany, we have a bit closer a dependence between a one-to-one -one matching between the change of economic growth and the unemployment rate. Well, if we go then after reunification, then we see also that the potential growth grows down and also our coefficient of determination is yeah, only half of the value of this period. So of course, this was also a time econ in economic situation of Germany where many things have changed and that we are also not, uh, not that surprised that we have here a period where the, we do not have directly such a classical dependence between unemployment 
and economic growth. Then the period from 2001 to 2008 uh, began a higher R squared, but even potential growth went down. there and then for the time from 2000 um, after the financial crisis when we remember this when we look at the uh, German job market then of course we know that yeah, we had something like a decoupling of the job market from the um, economic performance. So the uh, German unemployment rate stayed very low or the job market um, performed very well, even in phases where we do not have such high um, economic growth. And therefore, it's also not surprising that this parameter goes up, uh, but what we see also is that potential growth goes down. So let's see, why do I have here a minus sign? The slope is okay. Yes, yes, I can see it's copy in the right way. What happens here? Oh, this is vertical axis. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So here we have a minus 0 0.3. So, and with this minus sign, of course, it is hard uh, to interpret this then as potential growth uh, during this time. But also we have here only a very low coefficient of determination. So um, then uh, we have to be really careful to directly interpret this in this classical dependence between economic growth and unemployment. And also what we have to admit is that we have here in these periods, and there you have also to be careful, the um, <clears throat> time series is not very long. So here we have uh, eight data points, here we have um, 13 data points, and uh, the less data points you have, uh, the less um, is it possible to directly um, interpret this as a stable dependence between variables. Because of course, when you want to do statistics, then it is always better to have as much as possible data points. Okay, but in general, what we see from this descriptive um, analysis is also that over time, if we can interpret the cut of the vertical axis as potential growth, that potential growth over time went down. And this is also what we would expect because during the last 30, 40 years, we see for the developed countries that potential growth is going down in general. And maybe you find this also for your countries. I think most of you have also developed countries. Um, so this is then also um, <clears throat> a compatible result of this analysis. 
Okay, yeah. And yeah, I think it will be really interesting what you find then for these numbers for your um, countries. And yeah, so you can do then a little descriptive analysis here of these little model. Okay. Yep. I think this is for developed countries. Um, these uh, time periods are quite reasonable. And then you can um, additionally look, uh, I think you have Japan, then of course you can also look at uh, the, um, <clears throat> the uh, Japanese crisis in the ends of 19. Um, and you can also, yeah, somehow try what I'm done here, that you include the years with the um, big turmoil during the crisis and you exclude these um, numbers because here, if we include, so this is okay, okay, this I should also have said here within this time period. We included Corona and financial crisis. And well, then it is also not, uh, yeah, very surprisingly that our data becomes less interpretable because of course, during Corona crisis and financial crisis, uh, yeah, think of the um, uh, impact of short-term work. So there from the government side, we really directly went into the um, labor market. And here we want to fit uh, economic, a general economic dependence between unemployment and e economic growth. And we include two, three years where we directly influenced via the government, um, the uh, unemployment market. So this of course, then would be also not very surprising that we have a um, hardly <coughs> interpretable um, dependence uh, between these two variables. Yeah, what you need is a real GDP growth. You, you need the, you need only the growth for the fit. You need the the growth rate. Yes, yes. But um, I have, when I downloaded it from these um, uh, Fred uh, data set, um, then I calculated it. But for your fit, you. Um, can, of course, if you have directly the real growth rate, as I find it here. So if you have it directly, then you do not need the um, index for real growth. Uh, the index for real GDP, you can directly use the real growth rate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So from these IMF data, um, again, let's go in here. So what you directly obtain from the IMF data mapper is uh, the real growth rate of GDP and you got the unemployment rate, but you use for your fit, not the unemployment rate, but the change over year of the unemployment rate. So this is 
that I gave you here. So this would be then unemployment rate, for example, unemployment rate, let's say uh, 1981 minus unemployment rate 1980. Well, then you have, of course, uh, less data points. Um, on the other hand, you do not have the um, problem of the um, yeah, uh, seasonally um, fluctuation. Well, we try to cancel this out that we calculate with the quarterly data um, the change over the former year quarter. Um, well, it's not a problem, but of course you have then less data. But uh, if you find quarterly data for your country, you can redo this or try redo, to redo this also for uh, with quarterly data, but you do not need this to do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can really rely on the yearly data if that's okay for your analysis. Okay. Um then uh for the presentations, um, I yeah, more or less fixed that we can go to the use hostel in Gefa on the 15th to 16th um, December. And, uh, but I will give you for this also the information. Okay, done, hopefully can start your analysis and if you have problems then just ask.